Hello, everyone. This is Gerald Salenti, and we have with us again, very honored, honored, and privileged to have with us Judge Andrew Napolitano, because nobody says what you say with the authority and the judicial background to put things into perspective of what this country is, what it was, and where it's going in terms of the Constitution, our freedom. And it's very, very heartbreaking with the latest article that you just wrote. And it's called Bloody Gina and her team of torturers. Last week at a pretrial hearing at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, the naval base for Abd al-Ram al-Nashari, you could pronounce it correctly, a Saudi who was charged with being the mastermind of the attack on the USS Cole in 2000 at which 17 American sailors were killed, a psychologist in charge of interrogating Nasheri described in vivid detail both the modern and medieval techniques of torture used upon him. And you go on to mention that the person that became the, uh, what, the, the, the top CIA. The director of the CIA was the lead torturer, a woman named Gina Haspel, nicknamed by her colleagues, Bloody Gina. So listen, all those who know me know that my favorite dog in my whole life was named Gina. I'm not talking about the dog. I'm talking about Bloody Gina. I'm talking about Gina Haspel, who we now know, and this is very unusual for this to happen, Cheryl, when this psychologist last week was called by a defense witness, the interrogators called by the defense to demonstrate to the judge that the evidence that the government wants to introduce against this guy, Nashiri, was obtained by torture. And they had him describe in detail, and I'll, I'll spare our viewers the, the, the gut-wrenching details, except for one, <clears throat> uh, of what they did to him. In doing that, he either intentionally or unintentionally let it slip who the chief torturer was. And that's Gina Haspel. This is 2002. This is in Thailand. Very significant where it is. We'll get to it in a minute. She's the head of the CIA station in Thailand and, and the, was the head of the team perpetrating the torture and wrote detailed memos, which are now declassified for the most part. You can get them online. Back to her bosses uh, in Langley. So this is the first time we've heard under oath by a person who participated in the torture, that it was approved by the highest levels of the CIA and named the person who was in charge of it who would go on to become the director of the CIA. Torture is a federal crime if committed on a person who's uh, in custody, punishable by 20 years in jail. So this is the first time we know that a CIA director, probably not the first time it happened, but it's the first time we know about it committed felonies earlier in her career. Now, what do we care? Why do we care about Nashiri? <clears throat> because if the government can torture him and learn at the end of the torture, he said the same things under torture that he told them ahead of time, but they didn't believe him because they wanted to inflict pain and misery on him. If the government can do that, then there isn't any restraint on the government whatsoever. Now, just to finish this story, the statute of limitations for torture is eight years. This torture occurred in 2002. I am sure that the psychologist was aware of that when he admitted that he was part of the team yeah. and, Gina, and bloody Gina was. But they have not escaped all prosecutors because the International Criminal Court in The Hague, to which Thailand is a member because the torture took place in Thailand, characterizes torture as a war crime. No statute of limitations and no executive pardons recognized. Meaning if these torturers, whose names are now out in public, go to a country where the court is recognized, they can be arrested, indicted, and prosecuted. By the way, who recognizes the court? All countries in the world, except for North Korea, China, Russia, in the United States. Uh, what a what a club. <laughs> killer club. Yes. You know, you, you mentioned they call her um, 
Bloody Gina. Gina. You know, I keep hearing they always blame this 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 if only women were in charge. Oh god. You know, I'm so sick of that. I don't care if it's white, black, green, yellow, men, women, good and bad come in all of them. Yes. You look at the track record of the women in charge. Hillary Clinton, well, how'd you feel when uh, you heard Muammar Gaddafi was killed? We came, we saw he died. He... Madeleine Albright, they asked wow. her the price of 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five worth the sanctions and the war that Bill Clinton committed when she was on 60 Minutes with Le Leslie Stoller, she said, yes, the price is worth it. And you write about this. Her team calls her Bloody Gina. The, the people in the CIA, she, right? Yes. Now, she was appointed by Trump and Senator Feinstein. Uh, not a fan of this show or of you or me, but you know, even a, a, clock, a stopped clock is right twice a day is terrific on the subject of torture. Senator Feinstein of California is the one who put into the public record of the Senate the 6,000 uh, pages uh, that the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee staff had uncovered of the tortures that George Bush authorized. George Bush personally asked her not to. Barack Obama personally asked her not to. John McCain said, because he's a victim of torture, put it in there, and if you don't, Diane, I will. Anyway. She's interrogating Haspel, uh, who was up for Senate confirmation to be the head of the CIA. If she had asked just two more questions, or if she had known what we now know, then Bloody Gina would never have been confirmed. Yeah. You go on also to mention here that <clears throat> most judges would have dismissed the charges against the defendant for such criminal behavior. Oh, well, let government. me tell you why. Without even getting to the torture. This guy's been waiting for trial for 14 years. 14 years. Isn't there a speedy trial clause in the Constitution? Yes. Does it pertain to Cuba? Yes. Here's why he's been waiting for trial for 14 years. He's on his second defense team. The defense team is civilians and military. The first team quit. Why did they quit? Because the feds bugged their communications with their translator and with their client. Most federal judges and state judges, learning that the government did that to the defense team, would dismiss the charges against the defendant. But this is Guantanamo Bay, where the prosecutors and the judge have the same boss, the Secretary of Defense. Oh. And so sometimes due process gets watered down. It's terrible. Just, just terrible. And the torturing of this guy initially was on the basis of anonymous tips. Anonymous tips. You know, the uh, you mentioned also that um, cost us, it's spending $500 million a year? To keep Gitmo open. There's only 37 prisoners there now. When Gitmo was first opened, you and I were criticized for condemning the concept of a devil's island. Supreme Court agreed with us. The Bush administration lost five out of six Supreme Court cases, and the sixth had, had to do with where a person was physically going to be tried. But all the cases where they tried to argue the Constitution doesn't apply, the laws don't apply, federal judges don't apply, uh, the Supreme Court shot them down. You and I argued that uh, the whole thing was illicit, and the 9-11 people and whoever else they gathered up, like this uh, person, Nashiri, should be tried in federal court. If that had happened, all of this would have been over with 10 years ago. Gitmo would have been closed. Instead, they're spending a half a billion dollars a year to keep it open, and they continue to trash the Constitution as they do so. Every president, from George W. to the present one, Obama, to his credit, tried to close it. Congress enacted legislation that uh, barred him from uh, doing so. Trump boasted about it, said torture works. We should put... Uh, people from the streets of New York down in the Gitmo. Um, I assume it was typical bravado and exaggerating uh, by him. But but it's still there. It's still a devil's island. It's still costing a fortune. It still trashes uh, the Constitution. And people like Bloody Gina get to walk free. And there, you know, there's another ele element to it. 
we have no right being down there. Cuba is not our country. Correct. That's you know, where I part, just... The, the, the other part of this is that uh, what, what it's going on, what, now 20, uh, almost, what, 20 years down there? Yes. So you said a half a billion, so that's $10 billion we spent? Yeah. $10 billion. As the, as the infrastructure of this country is rotting away, and, and again, this is barely any news at all. And an interesting fact in here, by the way, right in your first paragraph, you say this guy, Nishiri, was a Saudi. Yes. Yeah, was where, did he, where did he get the money? And where did he get the explosives sufficient to blow a hole the size of a baseball diamond in the side of an American ship? Where did he get that from? Well, we can guess, and it would be an educated guess where he got it from, the same creeps that Joe Biden is about to meet with in the next couple of weeks. Not the same human beings. This character that runs the Saudi government was a child at the time, but the same culture, the same family, the same group, the same people that dispatched 19 murderers to take down the World Trade Center and, and attack the Pentagon. And they're still our friends. The same people that slaughtered Khashoggi, the reporter for this Washington Post, cut him up into, into pieces while they played classical music in the background, and they're still our friends. Uh, again, you, that's why I pointed it out. You know, how come they, you know, the, uh, what, was, what was it allegedly, what, 15 of the 19 people on those planes were Saudis on 9-11, as I the story goes? I, I think it was 19 of the 20 and the 20 of the course. Anyway, anyway, how come number. we invaded Afghanistan and not Saudi Arabia? The hypocrisy, the sickness. And that's what this article is really brings it down to. You know, what kind of country are we living in and how so, sad it's become? The government recognizes no limitation on its power. If this government can torture a human being and then boast about it, it recognizes no limitation on its power as long as it can get away with it politically. And they're getting and away with it. government without limitation is the most dangerous thing on the planet. And that's what we have. Yes. It's not just bloody Gina. She couldn't no. have done this alone. It's the whole culture. The whole culture of the CIA and the D Department of Defense and Department uh, of State, and with some exceptions, the White House. And again, the CIA, with that guy, that, that murderer, uh, Harry Truman, <clears throat> what a, a love Nakasaki and Hiroshima, let's drop atom bombs on him. He's the one that brought us the CIA, right? Yeah, yes, he is. The National Security Act of 1947, which, of course, forbade the CIA from doing anything in the United States or being involved with law enforcement. We now know from former governors of states in the U S I won't mention their names, uh, that the CIA is present in every state house in the United States. And we know thanks to a very ill-advised executive order of Ronald Reagan, which supposedly was aimed at the, at stopping drugs from coming in from Mexico, that the CIA engages in surveillance and drug interdiction inside the U.S. So they automatically violated their charter. And as for Harry Truman, I get in trouble when I say this. I don't care. If you measure uh, the number of deaths per second, he's the greatest mass murderer in the history of the world yeah. by dropping those atomic bombs, the first of which was aimed at a Roman Catholic basilica on a Sunday. Uh. And again, look what 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 uh, probably you know countless billions we do to spend on on so-called intelligence, or trillions I should say by now. And what have they brought us? Tell me the great 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 CIA. We got them before it happened. I'll, I'll tell you what they brought us: hatred around the world, people wanting to kill Americans and destroy us because of what the CIA has done to them. That's what they brought us. You, you know, know JFK had his brains blown out within 
a few months of saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut down the CIA and, and scatter its assets to the four corners of the world. It's a government within a government, and it has no uh, accountability. Uh, and you mentioned how much money they've spent. We'll never know how much money they've spent, even though the Constitution, you and I have talked about this, my dear friend, even though the Constitution says all expenditures of the federal government shall be recorded in a public register. Go try and find that register. Go try and look up what the intelligence community spends. You can't find it. They don't give a damn about the Constitution. And every single one of them took, from bloody Gina and Mike Pompeo on down, took an oath to uphold it. You know, and again, what you're writing about, we're talking about, the people have no idea what's going on. I mean, nobody knows what, you, what you're just saying here. You know, maybe, you know, out of the whole country of 332 uh, million, maybe a thousand, you know, 10,000 people know this. I mean, it's and it's sad that people don't care that these blatant violations of human rights and of the Constitution go on over and over and over again. And the government gets bigger, fatter, more bankrupt, and more secret every, well, the single, every day. The people would care if they made an issue of it. Like when you go to the Ukraine war, it's day after day, picture after picture in all of the media, on TV, everywhere, but not with the Iraq war, not with the Afghan war, not with the Libyan war, not with the Yemen war, none of those. We won't show anything. So if the people were tuned into this, they'd say, wow, just like look what they're being tuned into now. The big news, the big news, January 6th, 2020. That's what we're going to be deluged with in the next uh, couple of weeks, starting <clears throat> starting tonight, where every network except Fox, one of the Fox networks, I think the Fox business is covering it, but Fox News, which is the vastly larger of the two, is going to go with its normal programming. But everybody else is covering it. So you go to CBS. Not, not only is CBS television covering it, but CBS radio is covering it. I think they're even pre preempting the Mets here in the New York City area <laughs> to, to cover this stuff. What do you think the what do you think the, the, the outcome of this is going to be? I think they're going to make a criminal referral against former President Trump uh, to the DOJ, and then it'll be up to Merrick Garland to decide what he wants to do. Does he want us to look like a banana republic? where the, the Justice Department prosecutes a, a former president, uh, or, is, or is, is there real evidence of crimes here? Is this a political stunt by the Democrats to give them a boost in the uh, November midterms, which they're widely expected to lose? Or are they seriously performing a service to the American public by revealing a serious effort to overthrow the government? I mean, I don't know how the American public is going to accept it one way uh, or the other. Yeah, this is, um, again, all the attention is going to be put on this and the people have no idea the real things going on affecting their lives. You know, just like we heard for how many months, you know, Amber Heard or we never heard of before and, and, uh -huh. and Johnny Depp is showing the stupidity of what these people are doing and how this should be what you just wrote about, about bloody Gina and a team of torturers to see where America has gone, where it's going, and, and how bad it's become, and all our loss of our constitutional rights and our, our, our human privileges. You know, if, if we had the ability, Gerald, I would say take one of those young people that works for you, give them a, a camera and a microphone, and just go out in the streets and ask them, do you know who Johnny Depp is? Do you know who Bloody Gina is? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what the answers are going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred to zero. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, Judge, thanks so much. And um, again, it's so sad what's going on here. And I, I'm very concerned about the future of our, um, our country. But the good news is people like you, me, and Scott Ritter, and Phil Giraldi, and McGregor, and Paul Craig Roberts, a number of us are fighting for freedom, peace and justice, Ron Paul, uh, 
one after another, Massey down in uh, Kentucky. And on, everybody, January 20, January, July 23rd right. of this year, up here in Kingston, New York, on the Four Corners of Freedom, we're going to have a Peace and Freedom Festival. And Judge Napolitano is going to be the speaker there to bring it all together. We're going to have, oh, great bands, music, food, uh, and, you know, drinks, entertainment. And so please come here on, we're going to start at 2 p.m. July 23rd on the Four Corners of Freedom, John and Crown Street, the only place in America where there are pre-revolutionary war stone buildings on each corner. And the seeds of democracy were sown here. Over right. 70% of America's constitution comes from the constitution that was written right over here. I can almost throw a, a rock and hit the building where John Jay, the Supreme Court judge, was a judge over here. And when New York was the first cap, uh, Kingston was the capital of New York, the first capital before the British burnt it down, that's where the constitution was written. So we're bringing that, freedom back. And so that's where be I here. believe... Chief Justice John Jay's remains are still interred. Yep. And so the judge is going to be there, and you're going to want to be here too. Again, we're going to be putting it up on the Occupy Peace site in just a few days, but keep it in your head. And thanks, Judge. We'll see you next week. Pleasure, Gerald.